you also got to look at it in a positive way. The gospel is going forth and commercial people are paying for it to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the, the carols, <coughs> the hymns of Christmas are the richest in theology of anything that has ever been written. Some of the greatest writings, some of the greatest music, the Hallelujah Chorus, Think about all of it surrounding Christmas and Christ's birth. His birth and death even changed the calendar, for heaven's sake. It's a big deal. I wanted to do something I've never quite done quite the same. Each year I try to find a way to frame the same story, but in a different frame to present it a particular way. And uh, if I use other people's sources, I try to put that on the paper so you know where it came from. But today, the source and inspiration was from the Holy Spirit to frame it the way that I've tried to frame it today for us all. And I retitled it this way, A Doctor's Report on Christmas. A doctor's report on Christmas. There seems to be a certain legitimacy when we talk about a doctor's report. We think that there is a certain amount of legitimacy because sometimes his report, our life depends on that. So it's a very important, very important thing. Even with Dr. Luke, with his style of writing, reveals a certain prominence of his skill with the language that is presented to us in the gospel according to Dr. Luke. Pretty amazing, his style of writing. Father in heaven, I thank you for giving us this opportunity to share Dr. Luke's account and report on the greatest story. We thank you, Lord, for making it real to us, afresh and anew, after all these years and after many times coming to church in the Christmas and holiday season. Make it very special for us today. In Christ's name, everybody said. In chapters 1 and 2, Dr. Luke, in his report, he reveals the might and the power, the majesty, the glory of God. And he also records the actions and the reactions of those associated with the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ. Very interesting how he portrays the account. He will tell us how the Holy Spirit came upon and empowered the godly people who were a part and associated with that miraculous birth of Christ. A diverse cast 
of Bible characters. Have you received a word from the Lord? A diverse cast of characters. And when I look out here to our group, we have a lot that are missing today. But we are a diverse cast of characters here, aren't we? I think we found that out uh, by our rubbing shoulders with each other over the years. A diverse cast of characters that we find in the body of Christ. This diverse cast of characters received a word from the Lord. And he tells us how it played out in their lives. It's interesting to watch how God works in people's lives over the years as a pastor, ministering to people God's Word and teaching and preaching God's Word. You, you see, many times, you see how it is played out in people's lives and how they experience that in their journey of faith. How God's Word, a word from God, plays out. How many has received a word from God? It's called the Bible. Some people go around thinking they have a word from God. I just think they ate sometimes too many hot dogs. I don't know. Maybe you can have a word to give someone, but it's only a confirmation of what God has already given you. I had that to happen when I was coming from West Tennessee to East Tennessee. As many of you know, I stopped at Pat Boone's house and wound up preaching there in his house. And, and, and a lady, there was 30, 40, 40, right at 40 people from Presbyterian Episcopal Church that came to the house. That's, they were already planned to be there. But the speaker was at the hospital on an emergency. So when I saw Mrs. Boone, she said, well, Reverend, you're going to be speaking in about 15 minutes, so get ready. Yeah, I was just popping in, you know. And a, a person, one of those uh, Episcopalians that had been filled with the Holy Spirit gave a word that day. And it was a confirmation of what God had spoke to me an hour before on Interstate 40. So God does speak to people. But it's a confirmation of what He's already working in our lives and speaking to us. So this diverse character of people in this story received a word from the Lord. And we saw how it played out in their lives. Their testimonies should be an inspiration to all of us for a greater confession of our own faith. I said their, their testimonies and their experience should in, inspire us to a greater confession of our own faith during this Christmas time. From angels to a temple priest, a barren wife to a teenage girl, and the lowest of society, the shepherds. What an amazing display of God's love, grace, power for lost humanity in the context of this story. First, there was Zacharias and Elizabeth. I've always liked the name Elizabeth. Now, we didn't name our kids, we named Tammy and Cindy, but I've always liked them named Elizabeth for some. We've got friends of ours that have children named Elizabeth. And so there was Zacharias and Elizabeth, Luke 1, 6 says, they were both righteous and blameless before God. Okay? How would you like the Holy Spirit to call you blameless and righteous before God? Wouldn't that be nice if the Holy Spirit said that about you? I think we'd all wish that. For sure. Verse 7 of chapter 1 of Luke, they had no children because Elizabeth was barren. And they were both now stricken. That's the King James Version. How many, how many of you here sometimes wake up in the morning you feel like your body is stricken with something? I feel that quite often in my age, older age. The other versions may say well advanced in years. That makes it sound a little bit more softer. Doesn't it? Well advanced in years. Stricken sounds like a 
some kind of a disease, but anyway, <laughs> they were stricken in the King James Version. Verse 11 through 13, And the angel appeared unto Zacharias and said unto him, Fear not. That's the first of, of the three fear nots in the story here. Your prayer is heard. Your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son. Man, you know, what a, what a, what a word from God given to, to Zacharias from Gabriel. Your prayer is heard. Don't you like that? Jeremiah 33, 3 is one of my favorite Old Testament verses in the Bible. I love that verse. Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things thou knowest not. There is a surety of an answer. Call on me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Gabriel is told by, Gabriel tells Zacharias that your prayers have been heard and your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son and you shall call him John. Not John the Methodist, but John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist. Verse 18, and Zacharias in so many words says, uh, he says, how is this going to be? He, he doubted. Yeah. He he's, he's has a little unbelief slipping in here. How is this going to be? Because my wife and I both are stricken. Pretty bad. We're stricken. How is this going to be? I found it interesting when I was outlining this and trying to frame it for you today. He was referred to by the Holy Spirit as righteous and blameless. Are you, you understand? But yet, when Gabriel comes and tells him that his wife is going to bear him a son who is barren and stricken in years, he has a hard time accepting that. How many times have you had a, a difficult time accepting what God was trying to speak to you? I think all of us have been there. How can this be? I'm old and my wife, not just stricken now, it's well stricken. I felt that way this morning when I got up real early. In verse 19, and the angel said, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I've come from the throne room of God, and I've got a word for you. Man, what a, what a deal is that? How amazing. How amazing. I have come from God. Some different versions of that. From the throne room of God with a message. We too have received a word from the Lord. Jesus is the written word. Jesus is the living word. And the written word and the living word, which is Christ, should become personified, should be welded into our spirit and soul and mind. The living word and the written word. And that Logos becomes that rhema to our souls. Come on. Yes. Gabriel said, I, I stand in the presence of God and I've come from God with a word to give you Zacharias. Now let's talk about a teenage girl named Mary. Some 14, maybe 14 years of age. Some say 16, 17, but yet a teen. Everybody agrees that she was a teen in our perspective. A teenage girl named Mary. And in Gabriel, angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Nazareth was a place that was held in scorn by Israel at that time. To a virgin espoused to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And when she saw him, the angel Gabriel, she was troubled at his saying. And what he said in the previous verse, highly favored, the Lord is with you, you are blessed. That sort of kind of shocked her, troubled her. 
between Gabriel the angel and the same that he gave to her. And this is the second thing in verse 30, 31. And the angel said for a second time, as he said to Zacharias, fear not. You have received grace from God, and behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, proclaiming the incarnation, a Latin term, and shall call his name Jesus, in Hebrew, Joshua, meaning Savior. How many are glad for the Savior of the world, who came, was born of the Virgin Mary, lived a sinless life, died a cruel death, was resurrected by the power of God, and sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us 24-7. Amen. In verses 34 through 38, Mary said to the angel, this is so similar to Zachariah's response, how shall this be? For I know not a man. The Holy Spirit, Gabriel said, shall come upon you. That which is conceived in you is of the Holy Spirit. He shall come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And your cousin, Elizabeth, has also conceived a son in her stricken old age who was called barren. That's interesting how they rephrase that. She was called barren. To be barren as a woman in that day was to be ashamed or a disgrace. There was something wrong with you. You'd done something wrong if you were barren. But the Bible says that uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth were righteous and shameless. But the culture would look at a woman who could not conceive a son or a daughter as barren. That's what they called her. This barren Elizabeth. She's barren. And Gabriel, how can this be? Gabriel gives a response and says, For with God, nothing will be impossible. In, in, in Matthew 19, 26, Jesus gives a dialogue about how rich people will trust in the riches and have a hard time getting into heaven like that, going through the needle of the eye, eye of the needle, the camel having to try to go through that was very difficult after the gates were closed. And he gives this analogy and gives this discord about how people will trust in their riches and they'll have a hard time trusting in God. But, he, but Jesus finishes this discourse about going through the eye of the needle and getting him back in after the gates are closed. And then the disciples said, well, that's impossible. You know, they can't get through the eye of the needle. How, how will people be able to get to heaven? And Jesus says, with men it is impossible, but with God. Verse, verse 23 of Matthew 19, but with God all things are possible. How many are glad that with God all things are possible? I do have to throw in this caveat. Uh, Mark 9, 23, he gives us a little different view. We're looking at God uh, here. Gabriel says nothing would be impossible with God. Jesus said in 19, 23 of Matthew, with God all things are impossible. And then Mark gives this, turns the back towards us. And he says, those who believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. He talked about the, the power of faith in Mark 9, 23. Interesting to put all those together. And in Luke 1, 38, Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me, according to your word. I want you to know that may be one of the most amazing statements of faith in the Bible. 
Be it unto me according to your word. Powerful confession of faith. And I'm like Paul. Paul says, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. How many are glad that all the promises of God are yes and amen? Amen, so be it. Amen. So be it. Mary was a participant in the miracle of the incarnation at a level no human being can comprehend. 14, 16, 17 years old. Think about it. Mary was a participant in a miracle. No level of human being can comprehend. It is clear that she did not claim to understand it herself, but was simply in agreement with God's spoken word. I don't understand a lot of things. I can't explain a lot of things, but I want to be in agreement to what God's word spoke. Amen. Spoken word from heaven. It's clear that she did not claim to understand herself, but was simply in agreement with the word from heaven, and she worshiped God in humble acknowledgement of the phenomena engulfing her existence when she cried out, My soul magnifies the Lord. Listen, Job, Job in the Bible, uh, somebody kept coming with bad news. I mean, it was getting worse. Every messenger who came kept coming with bad news, bad news, more bad news, more shoes dropping, more bad news. And after all the bad news, the Bible says Job fell on his knees and worshiped God. I said, Listen, that's all we got, people. That's all we have. Amen. We can't control circumstances out here of everything that happens. But we can be in agreement with God's word and we can worship God no matter what. He gives and he takes away, but he's still God and we still love him and we still worship him no matter what. Amen? Now Mary visits Elizabeth, her cousin, in Luke 1, 39, 41. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the account of Gabriel's message to Mary, huh, Jesus, the name of Jesus, John the Baptist, leaped in her womb at the sound of Jesus, of the word spoken by Gabriel. I think that's, that is so amazing. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the account of Gabriel's message to Mary. The babe leaped for joy in her womb. That's a, that's a good story and a good account to give to Planned Parenthood. I think they need to know about that. John the Baptist, the babe, leaped for joy in her womb. John leaped for joy at the mention of Jesus' name. And then it says, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is for the day of Pentecost. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. John was filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit in Luke 1, verse 67. Do you see that the Holy Spirit was very active during this account? Dr. Luke continues in his report and account in Luke 1, 46 through 55. He gives us the account of Mary's song. And Mary's song was in the tradition of the song of Deborah in Judges 5. A, a song of victory for what God and triumph that what God has done. And listen, I, I, when I was putting this together and framing this, listen, Mary's song should be our song. Come on. Mary's song should be your song. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Is that your song? 
For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. And behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. Come on, that's our song today, people. For he has done great things and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He's put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry and with good things and the rich. He has sent away empty. He has helped my servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our father Abraham and his seed forever. Mary praises God for his love, for his favor, for his might, for his mercy, for his power, for his strength, for his grace, and for his goodness. Some might cry out amen to God today. That should be our song this Christmas time and all through the year. Now let us all join in praise to God for the same this Christmas Eve. Now let's finish Dr. Luke's account with the testimony of the angels and the shepherds, the lowliest of society. And Luke 2, 8 through 20, the angels proclaim Christ's birth to the shepherds. Do not be afraid, third time, fear not. For I behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be in all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And suddenly, whoo, there was a, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. Verse 16, the shepherds came with haste. They didn't waste any time. They came with haste and found Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. I wish people would come to church that way, in haste. Just can't wait to get here. Even get here a little early, because you just can't wait, because you're coming to the house of God. You're coming to give corporate worship and praise to God. One of my great experiences was being able to preach at Resurrection Lutheran Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, years ago. And I got there early because I had to do some things there. And so I came about an hour early and got into the building. And, and about 10 or 15 minutes later, all these people, I knew, mean, am I wrong about the church time? Just a few minutes after I got there an hour early, all these people come pouring in. I mean, real early. I, I, I asked one of the ushers, do, do I have the time wrong about when things start? Because I've got to speak. No, you got the time right, Reverend. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, their ushers came in, bouncing, just bouncing. They were bouncing. People came in. This was a charismatic, spirit-filled Resurrection Lutheran Church. I mean, the place was packed. Big church. People just came early because they were so excited. They were coming to glorify God and to worship His name. That's the way it should be. We don't need to be coming there like dragon saints. We need to come with haste and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Not dragging in like a very man. Come with joy. Come with haste to worship the living God for heaven's sakes. He's worthy of our haste. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy to get up a little early and get your blessed assurance moving. He's worthy of it. Come on. It's time for God's people to come to God's house with haste and joy to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You've heard it said many times, Jesus is the reason for the season. But the truth is, it's more. Jesus is the reason for every day for the rest of your life. He's the reason for every day for the rest of your life. Let's stand together and give praise to God, to this King of kings and Lord of lords in our hearts and praise today. Oh, come let us adore you. The course part, Joan. Oh, come let us
remember and told you where it's Christmas Eve. We're going to be here tonight. What time, George? Six o'clock tonight. And we're going to have a great presentation of honor to God. And there's going to be some good food here as well. So, join us tonight. We want to pray for Nancy Wayland. She needs our prayers very much. She's in Lillington now. We moved her from Wakeman to Lillington. And to rehab there in Lillington. And I don't know the name of the place. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, pray for Nancy. We need to pray earnestly for Nancy. We really need to. And I may have those out today for very different reasons. David, Pastor David and Becky are out. His sister's in the hospital here. And we need to pray for his sister as well in the hospital. And for David and Becky who is tending to her as well. Any other requests for prayer that you want to make mention before we... Mr. Ezra, yeah, you would check on him. Yes, thank you for doing that. They, were, they went to check on Ezra and they were a little concerned that he may not have had the nourishment of food that he needed there and I'm glad you checked on him. He's a retired pastor, 98, and still has a good mind and uh, he's an amazing person and we got to make sure, huh? He's going to try to be here tonight. You're going to try to get him here. But we need to honor him every time we get the opportunity. He's a man of God that served in very significant ways in years past. Very significant ways. White Plains, New York. He ministers in very large churches in his lifetime. He plays, plays a keyboard, or organ, and piano, both, but still can do it at 98. And he's crashing the gate doing 98, but he's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he's an amazing guy. So um, let's remember all these requests. And uh, God is good. And we put Jesus at the center of all this time together. We and at your home or at church, either one, let Jesus be the center of everything you're doing. And George, would you come and give us a closing prayer? Precious Father, we thank you uh, for what this day represents, that you have come and uh, walked upon this earth with us. Emmanuel, you have come. And we celebrate that both now, tonight, and for every day hence, Lord, that you came, you cared enough to come and be here, to experience life as we experienced, dear God. And we thank you for that. And Father, we lift up those that have been mentioned that are sick and those that are caring for those that are sick. And uh, we just especially mentioned Nancy Whalen, Lord. Yes, yes. She served many people. And uh, yes. Brother Ezra is an example. And we just pray, Lord, for him as well. That your protecting hand and provision be with him. And we pray for Pastor David, sister. And Father, we just thank you that we can come to you and know that you hear our prayers and that you are going to respond. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for everyone that's here this day, this, this morning. Father, we ask your blessings uh, upon them and their families. And we pray for this evening's service, Lord, for your presence to move among us. Uh, dear God, touch the hearts of each and every one and to bless the time of fellowship that will follow as well. And for all of this, we give you the glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
God love you and bless you. I'm so proud. My family's here today. Cool ties. So proud. So proud.